when I was a school kid I had this idea about languages. Languages, instead of having a tree structure, they have a structure similar to sets in mathematics. And why is that? That's because languages are not created from one common ancestor, but instead they are a mixture of different languages. How are languages created? According to the old theory, there was one common language, one Urheimat, from which a group of people migrated to different areas and started speaking differently for no reason. But according to my theory, there was a place, a land, which was uh, invaded by different people, different cultures, hunter-gatherers, agricultural people, pastoral people. All of them had their own language and they created a new common language. And as it turns out, I only reinvented the wave model. In this episode, I'm going to talk about this publication, Trees, Waves and Linkages, Models of Language Diversification by Alexandre Francois. I have to note that, in my opinion, all languages on Earth, maybe with the exception of Koiko languages, have uh, this wave structure. And uh, the... And the European languages are created by a mixture of uh, the language of hunter-gatherers, different agricultural societies, namely the Danuvian wave and the Mediterranean wave, and I think there was a Slavic wave maybe, and the language of pastoral cultures such as cattle herders and goat herders, but these are the topics of future episodes. Okay, let's get started, section 1.1. Because no natural language appears ex nihilo, one has to explain how new languages emerge out of older ones. Some, such as Pridgins and Creoles, or mixed languages, result historically from the encounter of two populations who were driven, under very special social conditions, to combine elements of their respective languages and create a new one. Yet this pattern, whereby a language is born of two parents, is not the typical scenario. No, I think it is. I mean, most of you would say that, okay, but here are the Romance languages, Latin, which resulted in uh, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian. Yes, but the thing is, if you know history well, you will know that the speakers of these languages weren't originally Latin speakers. They were Celtic speakers, Basque speakers, and Etruscan speakers. So, Romance language is actually a very good counter example for the tree structure. Okay, so let's just jump a bit in this paper. Here is another interesting thing. In a nutshell, cladistic tree-based representations are entirely based on the fiction that the main reason why new languages emerge is the abrupt division of language community into separate social groups. Trees fail to capture the very common situation in which linguistic diversification results from the fragmentation of a language into a network of dialects which remained in contact with each other for an extended period of time, creating what Ross calls a linkage. And that is the biggest problem with, uh, with the tree model. Because if you look at the map and you look at the Indo-European languages, what you see is that they are all neighboring to each other. I mean, mostly. As you see that Slavic languages, with the exception of South Slavic languages, are neighboring to each other. Germanic languages are neighboring to each other. And so on. So, the question arises. Why did Proto-Indo-European broke into several languages? Germanic, Slavic and Latin languages, why did Germanic languages broke into several dialects? And after that, why did Celtic speakers give up their language to speak a Latin language? And why do Europeans give up on their own native language to speak English language? Well, this is a recent uh, development, but this is what's happening. People are trying to create or find common language, because this is what languages are about, understanding each other, finding a common ground. And uh, even hunter-gatherer societies such as Khoisan people have a language which is able to run their societies, they are able to understand each other, they are able to communicate with each other. So why we Europeans developed all these crazy languages just to just not to understand each other, this doesn't make any sense. Okay, later on the paper just uh, 
describes the tree model. I mean, nothing really fancy is going on. It just really gives scientific detail of how a, the tree model works. Basically, every school kid understands that, so there's no need to explain it further. Okay, there's nothing really in interesting until section 3.2, where the paper explains the wave model or valent theory. And this was proposed in the 1870s. Now, this is interesting that this kind of structure was proposed such a long time ago, and no one really constructed a family of languages that is based on uh, this wave model, with the exception of oceanic languages. Now, there is the explanation of uh, how the wave model works. There is nothing particularly complicated or surprising here, it's just sets in mathematics. It's common knowledge that the English vocabulary is a mixture of Latin and uh, Germanic words, and also Old French and the Slavic words, and also it has a lot of Hungarian words, as we will see later. So when uh, uh, representing the origin of the English language, why not try to use a wave model instead? An important implication of the wave model is that a given language can perfectly well belong to several partially overlapping subgroups. Yep, and again just think about the English language. Okay, as I see I was a bit wrong before, because as it turns out, other than oceanic languages, there are other uh, proposed language families that are uh, that use the wave model. And the reconstruction of Indo-European languages is still based on having a Proto-Indo-European language and splitting it into many other languages. But I, what I meant before is that uh, Indo-European languages being results of a mixture of different foreign influences instead of this one Proto-Indo-European language. And I mean, uh, later on my episodes, uh, you will see what I meant. Section 3.4, the three special cases of a linkage. Now this is interesting because what this section states is that the tree model is actually special case of the wave model, which means that the wave model is superior to the tree model. Carrying on, there is nothing particularly interesting in this research paper. There are a lot of uh, definitions and a uh, lot of academic explanations. Then there is an example, the Northern Vanuatu language. Well, I mean, you can read it, but I wouldn't really bother with it, because I just simply think the way linguists deduce a creation of a word is wrong. So it gives an etymology of the word still, of the... What, what my problem is with this kind of etymology is that it's, again, it's, it's, it's based on a tree uh, model that there was a proto-oceanic word, uh, panako or whatever, which, lang which is reconstructed by uh, linguists, and uh, somehow all words descend from this common proto-word. In my opinion, it's the other way around. There were two proto-words. And for some reason, uh, one of the tribes became dominant and they had the dominant culture and they started to suppress the other culture or the people started uh, suppressing the other tribe. And what happened is that people in the other tribe or other tribes tried to adopt that word. Okay, they were in the process of giving up their word in favor of the other proto-word. But they got stuck in the process, so they created uh, new words between these two proto-words. So I, I want to go further than this paper. I want to say that there, that there was no such thing as proto-words and the etymology of each word is wrong. Each word is the results of the mixture between several proto-words. Okay, so I go further than this research paper. Take for example the origin of the word hombre in Spanish. 
According to academics, it stems from the Latin word homo. Now, if that's the case, why don't just Spanish people use the word homo? And the reason for this, in my opinion, is because this word has multiple stems. So Latin homo, Hungarian ember, and possible the word man. And ombre was created from the mixture of these words. You may wonder how did the word ember got there. I will discuss it in further videos. Then there are some new definitions, cohesiveness, subgroupiness. Again, these are just, you know, uh, tools for scientists. I don't think they are particularly interesting. Glottometric diagram. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it, it worth looking at so that uh, you can see an alternative to tree model but as I mentioned all words are the results of more proto words which makes this paper a bit less useful than I thought it is going to be uh, so then the conclusion contrary to widespread belief there is no reason to think that language diversification typically follows a three-like pattern consisting of a nested series of neat splits with loss of contact yes there is absolutely no reason to develop new languages when we already understand each other what we see recently is people giving up their native language in favor of english and no new languages are being developed. That's all for today. This is what I wanted to say. I will continue on making videos and my theories will be based on this wave model. Like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thank you.